Hi there. We've been getting a lot of questions about fascia and the texture of fascia, which I was really excited about because this will be a really interesting conversation. Fascia, from my perspective, is literally the cell membrane connected to every other cell membrane of our trillions of cells. So fascia is actually the container of the entire body, but fascia is here to hold and support space because we have trillions of cells. And if every cell is in correct alignment, it is positioned where it should be. So there's optimal space in and around the cell. Theoretically, moving a hand through the tissue, it should be fluid and flowing. The reality is though, we're under the constant force of gravity and we start winding down over time. So the texture of fascia will be extremely different from individual to individual, depending on a whole raft of things. What it really comes down to is breath and alignment. The breath is the key here. When we're breathing diaphragmatically, we are essentially keeping the body heated to its proper temperature as well as oxygenated. And if those cells are oxygenated like a blown up balloon, they're round, they almost defy gravity, they glow, and again, there's space. However, what happens with the breath is pain, fear, and stress over time cause us to reactively hold the breath. Let's say you're three years old and you experience a physical, emotional, mental trauma, whatever it happens to be, the initial reaction for us will be to hold, hold that breath. If you see a deer surviving an attack, you'll see them shake. They move the energy out of their body after it's come in so that they can bring their state back into equilibrium. We as humans, when we undergo this kind of trauma, we tend to hold and then we don't let it go. So if this happens at a really young age, and now I'm breathing in a very shallow way as a result of that, as I'm developing, that's going to create a very different feel to the tissue. Because if we're developing with a lack of breath, now our cells aren't given the energy that they need to develop properly. And those bodies are going to be a lot denser and harder. And I can see this in the youth today. Now, let's say you have been sick as a child, for example, and you've been taking a lot of chemical med medications. Chemicals in the body, the liver doesn't really know what to do with it. So the liver can become quite clogged and backed up. So if we have a liver that's not working properly, that's also going to impact the texture of your fascia because now we're going to have a lot of toxins and waste stored between those layers where those where, where that space should be. But now let's say I'm pretty healthy as a kid. I've got, you know, really great parents that love and support me. I'm getting a good diet. I'm doing what I want in life. And then boom, somewhere in my 20s, I have a physical injury and I go into this mode of hold. That again is going to create a holding pattern. But by the time you're fully developed, it's not going to be as impactful on how it creates density in your tissue. With that, we're also going to be compressing because if we don't have a strong diaphragm to keep that breath going and we're breathing up through here, the weakness of this foundation is going to cause us to collapse in. And then that's going to create a slowing down of systems functioning so we won't be absorbing nutrients properly or eliminating waste effectively. We're going to be attracting a whole bunch of inflammation into this area. We'll have a bloated gut that will help us attract parasites. Um, fungus, bacteria, all of those things. If we've had a lot of physical injury or even surgeries where there's been an impact in a moment and we have a bunch of scar tissue riddled throughout the body, that's going to create a very different texture and sensation as well. How we feel inside our body is dependent on the amount of space and the amount of toxins that are infiltrating the spaces that we actually have. And basically, energy moves in waves and spirals. So we literally twist down, we wind down over time. We just saw a video this morning where there was an x-ray showing how cellulite is actually calcified fascia. And it's lovely because we've been talking about this for years, but to see it in this x-ray just gave so much information. That calcified fascia, you could see, wasn't just on one layer. It was layered depending on when something happened in the body and we fell out of alignment and the resultant adhesions that are here to grip and support us from tipping over, how they end up spiraling and gripping to everything in its path to stop us from tipping. We have solutions for this, and we always have, but now that there's more information on what it actually is, 
Now we can take that information and we can move forward from that perspective and really make changes to our fashion because the goal is always the same thing. Put yourselves back in correct position and use this muscle, this diaphragm to do the breathing for us to bring in the oxygen as well as remove the toxins. If our body is properly aligned and we have this mechanism working for us, then we don't have a lot of issue with negativity because we are pulling in what we pull in, but we're also letting go what doesn't serve us. And when the breath is strong, that's the way it works. We keep this body of ours nice and fluid and moving through time in a really efficient manner. And it really takes that diaphragmatic breath to thrive. If you're breathing through the muscles of the upper chest, your body's in survival mode. And then you're going to experience any number of issues depending on when a trauma happened, what you eat, how your liver's functioning, how your emotional ability to manage stress is, because of course stress causes us to reactively hold the breath. So when people say stress is a killer, it really is because stress stops the breath and the breath is the most important thing for us to be alive, but also to thrive. Just with that understanding of what is fascia, what's it here to do, it's really here to support proper cell alignment and the ability for us to breathe diaphragmatically lifelong. And if you do, we're a very different physiology than if we allow our bodies to collapse under the external forces and breathe through the muscles of the upper chest. So to answer your question, the texture of your fascia is dependent on so many factors, but no matter what it is, you can take steps to create the change that you want to bring that body back into that spacious, healthy way. And we have so many wonderful videos on our YouTube channel that show you steps that you can start taking right away. So if you found this helpful, please let us know in the comments below and follow me and I would love to share more information with you.